the fall of nightmare moon what a stupid name i didn't even get to see the fight between her and celestia it was all about that moonlight pony who used to be leader of the children it's like a shitty book that acts as if it's about some pony famous and their life when it's all about someone who interacted with them and changed their life instead of something interesting about the famous pony <sighs> i hate the past slowly i opened my eyes dim lights nearly blinding me as I woke from that damned memory crystal I had found in the old bunker. My head felt like it had been split in two. I groaned and put a hoof on my head. Why do I feel like a hellhound just used my head as a punching bag? A moment later, Sheena and Aura's faces came into view, both looking tired and worried. Aura placed a hoof on my face, saying in a relieved voice, I'm glad you finally came out of that thing. I thought you were going to be stuck in there forever. She would have, too, if you had not gotten to her. Gotten me to her, Aura, Sheena said. Shadow, how are you feeling? I groaned. I just said I feel like a hellhound used my head as a punching bag. Isn't that a good explanation of my pain level? I am not surprised. You use just about all of your magic while trapped inside that crystal. Here, let me help you get a brew that will help with the pain, she said. Reaching towards a back part of the table and picking up a bowl with a funny smelling goo inside. Why is it always goo? Is that one of those gross kinds of brews that taste like snot, or is it the good kind that makes me want to keep drinking more? I asked as Zora helped me sit up. I will have you know that I did not brew this myself. One of our zebra doctors did, and the taste is not that of snuff, more like burnt socks, but it will help, she said, putting the bowl into my hooves. I groaned. Ah, gee, when you put it like that, I think I'd rather just deal with the pain. But I took the brew anyway. She was right, I think. I've never tasted a burnt sock, but if I had, I would not be surprised if this is what it tasted like. Luckily for me, it wasn't the worst thing that was ever gone into my muzzle. Not even close. After I got it down, I held back my gag of disgust, and I managed to ask, <clears throat> How long was I in that thing? Four days, Aura said as she stroked my mane. We arrived here yesterday, and good thing, too. Because if we hadn't gotten here, I was having a hard time keeping you hydrated, and I had no idea what to do. I knew you shouldn't have gone into that stupid crystal. You're not powerful enough to use one yet. You said so yourself, that only a palfer unicorn should ever use a memory crystal. I frowned. Ouch. I'll have you know that I'm no weakling, I said. My head was already starting to feel a lot better. Yay for nasty but amazing zebra cures. Shadow is right. She is not weak, Aura. But Shadow should also remember that you have gone through a great ordeal over the past week. Your magic is not strong right now. Especially after what happened while Aquila was in your body. Sheena said. I sighed. You know about that? Yes. Aura told me everything while we were waiting for you to wake. I was able to pull you out of the crystal a few hours ago, thanks to some old books that I have found about them. I will say I did not expect to see Aura like this, though. I thought a new enclave Pegasus was trying to escape from the kingdom until I saw you on her back. She said with a laugh. Yeah, I'm still getting used to it. Aura said, running a hoof through her mane. I missed my talons, but at least this mane is soft, so there's perks. I leaned up and kissed her lips softly, smiled as I felt her shock, but then her body shivered a little. I still think you look cute. I'm not saying I didn't like you as a griffin, though. She smiled a little. I'll admit, there are some nice things about this body though flying is still weird how do pegasi get around on such small wings 
I couldn't tell you. That is a stardust question. I said, sitting up more. Damn, so we lost four days because of that memory crystal? Yep. You're a big, fat idiot, and we all know it. But that's fine now, and you're okay. We had to stop in the kingdom anyway to drop off two letters of that crap you were delivering for Bottle Cap. I also took care of the three other settlements on your way here. So don't worry about them, Nora said. So you just flew down into random settlements and made deliveries for me? I'm surprised you didn't get shot at. Most ponies would have thought you were Enclave, I said. She shrugged. I just put on a duster that Captain Gunny had in his ship and hid my wings from them. I landed the ship each time, made the drop-offs, collected the caps, and we were off again. Honestly, your job's fucking easy. I rolled my eyes. Being a courier is, but being the courier isn't the same. Yeah, yeah, if you say so, she said, waving a hoof. At least I'm still taller than you. Sheena laughed a little. At least you are taking your new body with a bit of humor, Aura. Trust me, I'm still pissed. But I can't change it. At least not yet. I am going to do the best I can to live with this, she said. So, <clears throat> while I was out, did anything else happen? I asked. Not really. But we did hear a few rumors that some things have been happening up in the clouds. Not sure what yet, but Sheena said that they got reports about most of the troops in the Twin Cities heading back up to Nimbus, Nora said. What do you mean? I asked, sitting up straight this time. Sheena sighed a little. We do not know anything just yet. This all happened a day or so ago. The only thing we heard is that your father called for all troops to head back to the clouds. If we find out more, we will be sure to give you the information. But I believe that you'll be able to find that information out for yourself, at least a lot faster than my husband or I can. You really need to get back home, I said, getting back to my hooves. I agree, but I think you should at least rest for another day or so before we head out. You just came out of a nasty memory crystal. By the way, did you even learn anything useful in there? Nora asked. I remembered Mesomet talking to me through the crystal. I also didn't know if that was really part of the memory or my brain melting from overuse of magic. So I answered, I'm not sure yet. It's hard to wrap my head around what happened in there. It was like I was Moonlight, the leader of the Children of the Night first one. I felt everything she did. I could hear her thoughts, feel her emotions. I was her. I've never felt anything like that before in my life. Damn, that's not something I'd ever want to go through, Laura said. Yeah, and neither did I. If I ever have to go through one again, I'll make sure my power isn't feeble. At the end of the memory, each time I started to feel like myself, but then it would suck me back in. I said, stretching my legs a little. Now, enough about this memory crystal. We should get going. We've been away from home too long. Or aside. Sheena, is she healthy enough to leave? Sheena looked me over for a moment, then shrugged. As long as she doesn't overdo her magic for a few days, then I see no problem with it. Though I do wish you two could stay for a little while. It is nice to see you both again. Yeah, I know. McGrim's expecting us back soon, and with two more deliveries to make for Shadow, we don't have much time to spare anyway, even though I'd like her to rest more. Nora said. I guess you are right, and I do not like Captain Gunny being in the kingdom for too long. Every time him or his crew come here, there's at least two fights, and something always seems to go missing, Sheena said. Did Gunny hear some pony say in Captain Gunny's name? You wouldn't be saying nothing bad about him, would ye? Gunny said as he came into the room. His eyes fell on me and he beamed. Ah, look, Starshine is back to rules. Wake ye up, self, is she? Good. 
because Ganny needs to be heading off and teaching his new crewmate how the bitter cob be working. Oh look, the asshole's here. Yay. I said with a huge grin. Don't you be talking about Gunny's rear end now, Shadow. Er, uh, something. <clears throat> now, get your tiny butt out of bed. Gunny has a schedule to keep, he said. I looked over at Sheena and gave her a thankful smile. I'm glad you helped me get out of that thing. Thank you. Shadow, you are a friend, and you also have done a lot of good for the kingdom. You can always count on our help here whenever you need it, Sheena said, helping me out of the bed. And by the way, I'm giving you a few tablets with some herbs in them that will help your magic come back a little faster. With what you've gone through, you will need them. I looked over at Aura, then asked Sheena, Do you know of a way we can fix Aura? She gave me one of the looks of pity as she said, I am sorry, Shadow, but killing joke is a mystery to most ponies and zebras. I have heard of ponies around the wasteland trying to find a cure for it, but nothing has been found that works. I think the only ponies who would know something about it would be the Enclave. Shadow, it's okay. I'll get used to this in time, and honestly, it's not that bad being a pony. As long as I have you, we'll be okay, Laura said. Her voice still not what I was used to. I'm gonna find a way to fix you, Aura. I said. You don't need to fix me, Shadow. She replied. I may not need to, but I want to. You may say that you're fine now, but one day you're going to start missing your old body. And when that day comes, I'm going to make sure you'll be able to get it back. I said. I guess I should. No better than to try and change your mind. She said with a chuckle. Well, if you are feeling okay, let's get back to the ship and head home. I sighed at that. Home. Home sounds nice right about now, I said, and then turned back to Sheena. I wish we could stay longer. She hugged me. I know, but this is the way it has to be. She pulled away and gave me a bottle with small tablets in it. These are the tablets. Take one before you go to sleep every night for the next few days. You'll start to feel your magic getting back to normal soon. I took them, smiling. Thank you, Sheena. Oh, and I gave Aura some notes about what I believe your mother is going through with her memory loss. We had time to talk about her condition while you were out, Sheena said with a smile. What do you mean? I already know what happened to her memory. I said. Aura spoke up this time. Yeah, you thought you did. But I met with those weird brothers again, and they believe that the stone wasn't used on your mother. Or if it was, it didn't work. The memory problems your mother has doesn't match up with the stone's power. What are you saying, then? If that wasn't what happened, then why did Mom forget me? I asked. Sheena looked at me sadly. It is because I believe that the kind of magic your mother is using is damaging her body. I went over everything in my notes, read them for yourself, and then show them to your mother when you get back. She will understand them the most, I believe. If I am right, she may know a way to fix her own problem. You mean she might be able to fix herself? I asked. I am not sure. But I believe so, Sheena said. Now, get going. I hope that everything works out for you, Shadow. And please, do come visit us again when this is all over. I will. Thank you again, Sheena. Thank you so much, I said as Zora led me out the door. About time you be getting up. Gunny didn't have all day, Gunny said as he started down the hall of the medical wing in Sheena's home. Gunny, I thought you weren't the captain right now, I said as we got headed out of the mansion and onto the courtyard, where I could see the bitter cob was waiting with Elliot and Sunspot on the deck, and what looked like two zebras and another unicorn. Sunny be giving Gunny another chance, she did, but he also be right. Gunny still has to listen to Sunny for right now. 
Once he shows he can be trusted again, then Gunny will have the bitter card back himself. He said as he walked up the gangplank. Who are the others? I asked, pointing out the unicorn and two zebras. Oh, they be new crew members. Gunny needs more help since the last crew will only be the twins, he said. And because I said we needed some help, Sunspot said as she walked over to me. Don't let him act like he's in charge. The bitter cob is still being run by me, and it will stay that way until I feel like Gunny has earned his trust again. But the new crew was my idea. The unicorn is Isotope. He's taking over comms and navigation. The two zebras are Zekon and... I interrupted her a second as the second zebra turned around and I recognized him. Khalid, is that you? He looked at me and the zebra I met in Winapolis trotted over. Nah, it can't be the little shorty from the city. Girl, last time I saw you, you was going into that big tower. When you went and blew the thing up, I was like, damn! Glad to see you got out of there. My friend said he was sure to help you and your mom, but I never heard anything about the two of you making it out, for sure. I said, Alright, all cool, girl. My mom and I both got to the kingdom and all that. That creepy dude in the mask said y'all told him to come help my mom and me. You kept your word, and I'm grateful for that, he said with a huge smile. If you and your mom got here safe, then why are you joining Gunny's crew? I asked. Ah, shit. Well, you see, Mama be saying things like, Khalid said, his voice changing into what I'd expect a normal zebra to sound like. Khalid, you have to get out of this place and do something with your life. You are driving me crazy. I chuckled a little. She sounds like a fun mom. She just wants you to live your own life. His voice changed back over as he said, Yeah, I know, right? She be the coolest mama you know around these parts, you know what I'm saying? I was all worried and shit that she needed me, but honestly, I think she want to spend time with the old zebra who stays next to us. I love my mom and all, but I don't need to be seeing her macking on someone who ain't my pops. So you decided to join a band of sky pirates? I asked. Word. Did you see that pony griffin thing? She be interesting and a hot piece of ass, you know, he said. I looked back and saw the sunspot had left me with Khalid to talk to the unicorn. So I turned back to him, saying, Yeah, I guess she's cute and all, but don't you want to find some zebra to settle down with? Nah, got plenty of time for that when I'm older, you hear? But now, I'm just gonna enjoy life and get some freaky bitches while I can, he said. Okay, well, I'm not going to get in your way, but I warn you, Sunspot can probably kick your ass from here to the moon if she wanted, I said. Probably, but that means the chase will be all the sweeter when I get her, he said. Then looked over at Aura, who just came out of the ship with Solstice. Damn, maybe I need to rethink who I set my sights on. Those two might be even better. I frowned. Don't even think about it. The gray one's my friend, and the other is my mare friend. Damn, girl, I'm impressed. How little shit like you get a sexy thing like her? He asked. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it later, I replied. Right then, Sunspot yelled, Khalid, get over here so I can teach you what to do when we take off. We're leaving in a few minutes. Gotta go, shorty. Catch you on the flip side and all that shit. Khalid said, trotting off. See you later, Khalid, I said with a small smile. I was happy to see that the zebra made it here and his mother would be okay. When I'd met him, I wasn't in the best state of mind, but he still helped me. Shouldn't take us long to get home now, Aura said, walking up to me. That's if we don't run into trouble as we fly, Solstice said, then looked over at me. Glad to see you're up again, Shadow. You gave us a scare. Trust me, I'm happy to be out of that thing, too. It wasn't a pleasant experience, I said. Well, anyway, we'll be setting off soon, and since you don't have anything to do anymore on the ship, I figured the three of us can settle down in Sunspot's room. 
It's about time you told us what happened while you were away. Nora said. Yeah, and we want the whole story, Solstice added. I really don't want to relive what happened to me in the cage, I said. Too bad, because from what Sunspot told me, you haven't been sleeping much, or at all. Something's wrong and you need to talk to us about it. I don't care how bad it was, you are doing this, Aura said, nudging me towards the cabins. But, Aura, I don't want to talk about it. I complained, but it was no use. I don't care. Either you tell me what happened so I can help you, or we're going to have another conversation. The one that you really don't want to have with me. Trust me on that, she said, still pushing me towards Sunspot's cabin, Solstice not far behind. I sighed and turned towards the cabin, pushing the door open. Fine, but just let me get through the whole thing at once so I don't have to go over it twice. Then I looked at Solstice. And please don't hit me when you find out the role you played in my fun little cage of horror. Solstice looked at me funny. What's that supposed to mean? You'll understand what I'm talking about soon, I said as I moved to go sit on the bed. Once they were both settled in the floor, I took in a deep breath and started. First, I need to go back to why I tried to kill myself. So both you understand what was going on in my head. 